Organic photochemistry is a subject of both fundamental as well as practical interest, and we'll try to touch on both in this lesson. We're all familiar with the example of photosynthesis, and another important photochemical reaction that affects our daily lives is shown in the background of this slide. It's the photochemical reaction that's used to fabricate microelectronic chips used in the computer industry. The pattern that you see on this computer chip was created by shining light through what's known as a shadow mask. That creates a pattern of light on the surface, and the surface contains a thin film. The main ingredient in that thin film, which is called a photoresist, is this organic molecule that you see here. When light hits this molecule, it undergoes a photochemical reaction that's known as the photochemical Wolf rearrangement, transforming it from an aqueous base insoluble material to an aqueous base soluble material. Washing the surface then with base exposes selectively those areas that were exposed to light, and by that process, one can build up integrated circuits like you see here. Besides these practical examples, we'll also see that organic photochemistry will help to reinforce some of the fundamental concepts that we've been learning, such as the FMO theory. Let's use the carbonyl group to illustrate how energy from light is transferred to a molecule. In the S0 state, or the ground state electronic configuration, all of the filled levels are occupied by a pair of electrons. If the molecule encounters a photon whose energy matches the difference in energy between a filled level and an empty level, that photon can become absorbed, causing an electron to jump from a filled level to the empty level. And so if the energy of the photon matches the difference in energy between the n and the pi star state, the result is what's known as the lowest excited state configuration for the carbonyl group, the S1 state, which has a singly occupied non-bonded level and a singly occupied pi star level. If the energy of light happens to be a little bit larger, it'll match the gap between the pi level and the pi star level creating what's known as the S2, or the second lowest excited state of the carbonyl group, where there's a singly occupied pi level and a singly occupied pi star level. Here's a plot that shows the wavelength of light in nanometers that's required to match the energy gap expressed in kilocalories per mole between the ground state and the first electronic excited state for a variety of organic molecules. For the carbonyl group, absorption of a photon at about 360 nanometers matches the energy gap. That energy gap is about 80 kilocalories per mole, and that 80 kilocalories per mole of light energy that's transferred to the molecule is available to perform photochemical reactions that we'll be studying in the upcoming webcasts.